Stanley was the man who came up with the first practical transformer back in the 1880s. He apparently asked George if it would be okay if he would come to Great Barrington to do his developmental work on the transformer because he frankly had trouble breathing in Pittsburgh. And George said, sure. So Stanley set up in Great Barrington. He got a Westinghouse steam engine and a Siemens, a German generator, alternating current generator, and he set them up in an old factory in Great Barrington, and he strung wire out, and he lit stores and businesses on Main Street in Great Barrington um, with alternating current, using transformers to step the voltage up and step it back down again. The generator put out 500 volts, and that is what they distributed. They nailed insulators to the elm trees. And then in each establishment, as in Mr. Pope's home, for example, there would be a transformer in the cellar that would transform 500 down to 100 volts for incandescent lights. So William Stanley lit Great Barrington, and that was the first practical lighting of a downtown area, not a very big downtown area, but a downtown area with alternating current. George Westinghouse came to Great Barrington to see what Stanley had done. Of course, brought his engineers with him and his finance people and everybody else, and they said, yes, this looks good. This is terrific. So Westinghouse took Stanley's work and they put it on the market not as the Stanley system, as the Westinghouse alternating current system. But that grew out of the work that Stanley did in Great Barrington. Well, this is around 1890 now. Stanley's Great Barrington demonstration was in 1886. And in the years following that, things didn't go well between Westinghouse and Stanley. So Stanley eventually quit Westinghouse and came back to the Berkshires and started his own business, the Stanley Electric Manufacturing Company, and he opened that business here in Pittsfield. First in a factory downtown, which is no longer there, then to a larger factory downtown, which is also no longer there, and then Around the turn of the century, he bought land in what we call the Morningside section to build what he called the Morningside plant. And that plant, through the early 20th century, became the General Electric Transformer Works.